Well, okay. I've wanted to do this for quite some time now. And, uh, here we are. Uh, hello friends, Nizzle here. And today we are back in Maple Story. And I guess I can say back since I did one video in Maple Story before now. Uh, I'm going to attempt for the third or fourth time now. I think it's the third time. I'm attempting this to make a solo progression account, which means I am going to be playing the reboot server so it's as free to play as possible. I've set limits on how much I can spend. I think I'll it'll either be $25, so 25k or 50k NX is the max I'll ever use on this account. Um, but yeah, we're doing an, I'm gonna attempt to do an iron quote unquote uh, reboot experience. Iron is taken from the RuneScape uh, game mode, Iron Man, and Reboot is a great place to do it as they already have no trading. So I'm just going to further make this a solo game as it's already really solo once you get enough damage anyways. So I have some rules for myself and uh, they're, they're pretty basic but and hopefully make sense. So. I'm just going to focus on solo progression. I am allowed Kishin, Holy Symbol, and the MVP buff or any other map buff as I am not always in control of them. The only one I can actually be in control of is Holy Symbol. And if I have a mule on that can do it for me, I'm going to HS myself as it's an XP buff. I'm not going to sharp eyes, speed infusion, or anything else that makes training easier in the sense that I do more damage. Uh, I'm not gonna take carries, well, that should come pretty obviously, but yeah, just saying it here now, I'm not gonna take any carries, and this means that there's gonna be a lot more effort into getting gear ready just so I can make the advancement to the next set of gear. If, uh, and then no trading obviously, but that's already reinforced by the server, and they, I do know there will eventually be events or certain, uh, content in the game that I can't do without a party and we are not there yet so we will not talk about them just yet as we will as I'll have to think about them a lot uh the only one I did think about was CPQ Commercy Party Quest and I'm guessing other party quests uh I'll be using a mule or two mules I guess a friend's mule and myself uh to do them and this will essentially triple my runs but at the same time, I don't have party members, so it's a good and bad thing, I guess. And the following information is more to hold me accountable for the series. So I've strictly made it so I have to record in hour intervals or less, and then I need to edit the footage. So it's fresh in my memory and I can do an accurate recall recollection of it and talk about it. Uh, this means that I won't be making progress if the previous hour is not edited and ready to go already. And this is solo progression, so I plan to only play it when I'm not doing something co-op. Other than that, uh, you can see in the background that I'm just doing the tutorial I, uh, tutorial quests. Uh, I chose Sickness Knight and flipped a coin and ended up on Nightwalker, which works out pretty well since I'm a huge Nox fanboy. Uh, number one, Nightwalker NA. All that aside, uh, I've chosen Nightwalker as I wanted either a pirate, a thief, or a warrior, and I've I've never really played with Cygnus Knights that much, and I thought I might as well go for it. It gets me a good Blessing of the Fairy as well, or Blessing of the Empress, or whatever it's called. So that's nice. Uh, well, this is like a fresh, fresh account, so I'll be able to go over like everything I do very thoroughly and I'll get to show you how it's how I would play the game from a fresh start because this is a fresh start this is largely based off of uh sorrowful sorrowful memories little series that he's doing right now except he's doing it in Barra. I want to do it in reboot so it will again I will act like I'm buying the game so if I were to buy a game of this magnitude and size, I'd probably spend anywhere between $25 and $50, and then I would never add any more NX after that. If I use it up, 
it's used up. And thankfully, there's other ways to get NX through the game and events. Other than that, I'll see you back when I have gotten my first job advancement. Okay, after getting my job advancement, the first thing I did was I just went left a few maps and got some cash so I could take the ship out of a reef to Victoria Island, which is where I'll be training. Uh, you don't start with any cash, and it does cost meso unless you do the quests, which then give you the give you gives you a pass or something that allows you to take it. But I skipped those quests because I don't want to do them. I don't like questing in this game as this is mainly a grinding game, which is what I play it for. It's just something I can do in the background for the most part. Uh, other than that, when I landed, I I I was deciding between going to Henesis and Pyrrhon because I had to do two things, and I'll go over those soon, shortly. So, so, when I landed, I was kindly saw the message that there would be a buff, an MVP buff, which if you didn't know is a 1.5 times XP buff that lasts 30 minutes and is map wide, so most people will shout out a time XX colon then the minute and then the channel. Uh, normally Ardent Mill as that's the simplest place to put it for us and it's a hub kind of area since no one really uses the free market because this is reboot. Uh, going there you'll as long as you're in the map when it's used you'll get the effect for the next 30 minutes and that's what I chose to do. Uh, it was really laggy as you'll probably see a bunch of black screen but that's actually just Maple not responding. And it was just going to Henesis, which was the worst part. But um, I got there, made it in time, like in the nick of time. I got the buff and I got out and decided to do the second thing that I mentioned. So this one's rather long, even though I have a really short clip for it. Uh, I went and got a familiar card, the junior boogie card. I got three of them to be exact. Uh, familiars allow you to summon the monster that you killed with the card it represents. They can have three up to three energy bars, which requires one card per energy bar or energy circle or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the junior boogie is really helpful. I can't use it immediately, but it gives you mana, which means I can save on potting, which is overall just a huge benefit in the in the initial start as that's just less resources i'm using i'll go more in depth of the familiars as we get to them because there's a lot that i do with it uh there's a lot of familiars that are useful for different things like and we'll get to those as i need them coming back with the first main and the well the first and only training location is flaming mix golems they're in henesis and as you'll note, as I enter the map, you'll immediately see that the Kishin is up, and that is myself, that is my mule. And as mentioned, I will be giving myself Kishin and Holy Symbol as needed, because those are training buffs, not necessarily damage buffs. Uh, there's not much to say, except I leveled 20, and I showcase a pretty significant feature that a lot of new players miss or don't know about, since they don't really click on everything, and your HUD's already so crowded. Uh, there's... Underneath the star panel, there is a feature called Tot's Know-How. Every 10 levels up to level 60, a set of quests from Tot will appear that are called Tot's Know-How or Im Improved Know-How or something like that. Either way, you complete the small explanations of the topics it gives you, and you are rewarded f with a weapon box and, oh well, an equipment box for that level that you're at, so like ten, uh, 20... 30, 40, 50, and 60, and then a few other items depending on what you went over in the tutorials. So this level 21 is pretty basic. It gives me my level 20 gear, which is obviously an improvement from the base gear I'm using. And it gives me a beauty expansion slot, which really isn't that big of a deal unless you care about cosmetics, which I kind of do, but not enough to really worry about them. Other than that, from 20, I just kept on going. Something I failed to note is that you should be assigning skill points and your ability and your ability points either. Well, you need to assign them at some point. Don't don't dodge them. I I skipped them and assigned them in mass because I'm s 
somewhat strong enough to play the game without needing to take the time and there's another feature that's being not really mentioned but is on screen which is the combo feature every 50 combos you gain a combo orb which when you pick it up you gain a boost to your movement speed and you also gain some xp which is the real significant part either way uh every 50 after every 50 you'll get a combo orb and they're good to keep up because the higher the combo you get uh at certain times they'll switch tiers and when they switch tiers you'll be able to they just reward more points uh more xp points uh other than that i just slayed until i was level 30 got my equipment box and went to do my job advancement i did take out my pet halfway through and you'll notice that i am buffing there are self buffs and they only last a certain amount of time but they tend to not have cooldowns for the most part some do obviously but not all uh just in the general synopsis of everything use the snail pet you're given until level 30 which should take you way less than five hours uh, assign your ability points and your skill points as needed and make sure you use all of them before you go to the next job advancement uh, a Yumi Love has great guides on it, but I mean, if you need specific guides, I would go to dexless.com. And if there's a guide on the class that you are wanting to play, it's normally much more in depth. Uh, I'll include some links to places below that I find helpful when learning about this, got this humongous game that it really is. Uh, yeah, once I got to level 30, I went and did my job advancement, got teleported straight there, and tackled it as quickly as possible. So, doing the job advancement for every class, except for a few, is pretty easy. Uh, well, I mean, pretty similar, I guess. Is It's normally, like, kill 30 of said enemy, or kill 30 and, uh, kill 30 and pick up 30 of certain item or something along those lines, and Cygnus Knight is no different. It just requires you to kill 30 of these stupid bird-looking things, and you are automatically able to job advance by ne next talking to your uh, job instructor. So I make the second job advancement and assign my skill points, and then I immediately move using the Elenol Fairy Academy teleport. Not wasting any time again, I make my way, I use the maple guide, which is a very handy feature when you don't have a hyper teleport rock, which is a rock that allows you to teleport to any map, well, almost any map, from your world map by double clicking on it. Either way, I use the maple guide to teleport to the LNL Ferry Academy, which is on Victoria Island, and then I quickly moved to the main town of, uh, I don't even, oh, Elena? I can't remember my basic towns all of a sudden. And then I use the cr uh, the transportation to the cross cross continent area. Anyways, I went down from where all the planes are that you can take and immediately took Pilot Irvin to this place called Gold Beach. Gold Beach is pretty fantastic. It is sort of a theme dungeon, but I don't do quests when I can grind for the most part, unless the quests reward something good or worth your time and I don't see these things as worth my time, so I don't do them. Either way, I assigned my skill points from second from my second job advancement that I got back then, and I made my way one map to the left. This is the map I like training at the most, and that's what I did. I trained here, and I kept going. I don't know when I actually cut this video off, so I'll be right back. I just know that when I get to level 33, your events unlock. Forgot to mention, when you hit level 30, you are able to take these things called runes. Runes give you uh, double XP for a certain amount of time and can be modified by buff duration and also a link skill. Uh, they also tend to give you extra benefit or effects and this one made me big, which made it so when I walk into an enemy or I cause a shockwave beneath my feet, I immediately kill them, except for the big one, which is an elite mob. An elite mob, which I forgot to go over earlier, is a mob that is elite, quote-unquote, that is significantly stronger than the mobs in the surrounding area, but it is of the same type. And when you kill them, 
it will give you a message certain as like there's if there's you feel something in the dark or the dark energy is still here or something like that this is called elite mob hunting for the most part is when you do that and elite bosses can appear which are not elite mobs elite bosses can appear after you you've hunted a certain amount of elite mobs general idea is while you're hunting you're gonna run into elite mobs and when you are killing them you're eventually gonna spawn an elite boss they're not bad it just it's just extra reward if you can take them out and it's actually a great time because going over these events in quick manner is very easy to do uh, right now we have the master SS ring event going on which is a I think it's the best in slot ring just period even though you can have four rings um, and you can do various things to get coins uh, one of the ways to get coins is to kill elite mobs which have a chance at dropping a box uh, the boxes contain 10 magpie coins or the event coins and you can get three boxes a day from said mobs there's also time-based events as in certain times of the day they'll run uh, events and you'll be able to fly a kite or do bingo quizzes or you can go into town and do yut which is a korean game and even though i am half korean i don't know how to play it uh, going through all that you can use the magpie coins to buy jewels which you can buy 15 of them a day so you need 150 coins a day roughly well yeah unless you want to get more and go for the other stuff and you then craft the jewels and you try to get four s rank jewels uh it doesn't matter if they are not of the same uh it doesn't matter if they're the same or different you just need four s rank jewels which you can make into a master ss ring uh, uh there's also the haste event which if you complete those nine goals or one every goal you complete unlocks a box and they're obviously tiered so the first three are kind of basic and those boxes award exp and random rewards i'm not sure if they're set actually but it looks random such as spell traces and occult cubes which is the most i've gotten so far also i tackle curb rock for just two accessory pieces which take like literally no time to get so it's extra damage which means it's easier to kill things and i'm lacking damage and since this is a fresh account uh what else did i manage to do yeah, the haste event notes a lot of things such as the elite bosses. That one of your nine daily missions is to hunt an elite boss. And, or, yeah, an elite boss. Uh, kill 20 elite mobs. Uh, numerous, numerous little things you can do. Completing all nine apparently rewards you with a special reward, which I haven't done yet, as I'm editing the first hour. I really don't know when I stopped at uh, this hour or if I stopped at a good mark but I think I made it to level 40 but if not I'll see you when I'm at the end of this hour so yeah I was correct I just made it to a quick and easy level 40 and assigned my skill points because I do it like every 10-ish levels unless I really need it, I'm really hurting for it or it's like buffs that could be extended or it's just a lot of damage that I could gain as you'll see, I open the haste event, and I go open one of the boxes, and I get spell traces from it and some XP. I'm willing to bet it's just the re the chances of getting a better reward go up depending on the tier, and it looks like there's four tiers, green, blue, purple, and the really shiny red box. So it's just a daily thing to do, and you got to take advantage of events. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Pretty simple. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Sorry I went very aggressive almost sounding with the ending as I have like two more hours to edit and I'm kind of scared of that but at the same time I really want to do it and keep to this as this feels like it could be a really fun series especially when I get to go over every little detail and explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Other than that, this was Sniz. Bye.